Welcome back everyone in this lecture discussion. Today in this lecture, we will be discussing the classification of fishes, wherein we will be focusing on the taxonomic um, characteristics of fish and uh, some of the important taxonomic methods that significantly help the identification of the modern and the primitive um, fishes in, in the science of taxonomy. And um, it will also be in this lecture discussion wherein all of you will be given a chance to have a hands-on activity, hands-on laboratory activity on the um, morphometric and meristic characteristics of fish. So later on, we will be, I will be explaining what you are going to do in that particular laboratory activity. And it will also be in this activity wherein you will be um, having uh, your own dichotomous key of identification on the selected uh, fishes that I have I have uh, provided in your task five. Now, um, before we proceed to the taxonomic methods, let us first um, describe or distinguish the two important um, terms that is basically or that are basically used in the science of taxonomy. Now, first. We have here uh, the taxonomy basically deals with the theory, the practice, and uh, the theory and practice of describing biodiversity, including the naming of undescribed species. It also involves arranging the diversity into a system of classification and devising identification keys. So basically, this um, identification case involves yung tinatawag natin na dichotomous key and there is also one other key that is uh, basically employs um, elimination of some characteristics in order for them to identify what particular species that is. No? Um, taxonomy also includes the rules of nomenclature that govern the use of taxonomic names. So this was what we were talking about in our previous discussions that uh, the binomial nomenclature that was introduced by uh, Carlos Linnaeus basically had significantly helped in uh, the naming or the ta taxonomic naming of this um, discovered uh, species nowadays. While the systematics basically emphasizes the study of relationships, no? take note of that, the relationships postulated to exist among the species or higher taxa such as families and orders basically this is the study of relationships between the species the study of relationships between between the families the genus and the orders so basically uh, that is the differences between taxonomy and systematics now um as i have uh, said a while ago that there are different taxonomic characters now, here in our discussion, we will be focusing our attention into the four taxonomic characters, namely meristic characters, morphometric characters, anatomical characters, and molecular characters. Now, in the meristic characters, basically what you are doing in, in classifying organism is basically just to count any structures. No, Later on, you will have in your task, you will have to do a counting on the on the different uh, morphometric traits or meristic traits of a particular fish, no? And then uh, basically, it, later we will expound that, that, that particular explanation, no? Uh, morphometric characters is the second taxonomic characters. This, this is used basically for measure structures, like for example, measuring the length of, measuring the, the, the total length, the standard length of a fish, measuring the, um, body depth of the fish so basically this this entails about measurement of a particular uh, fish part and then the third is the anatomical characters basically deals on the skeleton or osteology and characters of the soft anatomy now this anatomical characters basically employs some important informations basing on the positioning or basing on the presence or absence of that particular anatomical characteristic. Now, uh, I have in this particular character or uh, in this particular taxonomic character, I have 
uh, prepared some of the important anatomical characteristics that basically identifies a specific uh, species of fish, right? So later I will show you. And then uh, the most modern and the most accurate uh, taxonomic characteris uh, characterizing um, criteria is basically the molecular characters. No? Molecular characters basically uses um, nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA in order for us to identify what particular sequence that basically agrees or basically signifies that that particular species uh, belongs to this uh, group of fishes, right? So it involves molecular uh, DNA, um, electrophoresis, and uh, PCR uh, analysis, right? So those are the four taxonomic characters that are being employed um, in the science of taxonomy. Now, as I've said, uh, we will be explaining further the four taxonomic characters. Now, let's first take a look at the meristic characters. So what are these meristic characters? Meristic characters originally referred to characters that correspond to the body segments or the myomeres. If you're familiar with the word myomeres, these are basically uh, the strands or the muscle strands of a fish, no? such as the number of vertebrae. No? Uh, in, in your laboratory activity, you will be counting the number of scales, the number of fin rays, and the number of gill filaments. Uh, I know that will be a very laborious um, activity for you, but I have given you a um, generous amount of time in order for you to finish that particular laboratory activity. Now, as I've said, meristic basically deals with counting. No? Counting basically, um, uh, bibilangin natin kung ilan yung mga scales in that particular portion of the body, ilan yung mga fin rays, ilan yung mga gill filaments, and some other um, counting measurements or counting characteristics of that particular uh, body part of a fish. Okay, so basically that is meristic. That accounts for counting characters. And then secondly, the morphometric characters. No? Uh, morphometric characters refers to measurable structures such as fin lengths, head, head length, eye diameter, and the ratios between the measurements. So basically this one is on the measurement. Let, like what I have said a while ago, that uh, morphometric basically entails for measuring from say for example you're measuring the standard length so basically you're you will be measuring from the tip of the mouth towards the uh the last or the base of the caudal fin right so that is the standard length if you're measuring the total length you will be measuring the tip of the mouth of the fish towards the tip of the caudal fin right so those are the data that you will be gathering in your laboratory activity and then here we have the next one is the anatomical characters. Huh? Anatomical characters basically includes characters of skeleton, osteology, and characters of the soft anatomy, such position of the viscera, divisions of the muscles, branch of the uh, branches of blood vessels. Some investigators favor osteological characters because such characters have been thought to vary less than other characters. Huh? Um, in this, in this particular uh, taxonomic character, uh, there are several examples of fish that basically uh, signifies or identifies that particular species of fish when they have this presence of a particular uh, unique uh, character. No? Like for example, the sturgeon fish do have uh, the scutes or the, um, the goldfish. Some of the goldfish are basically have this when, no? And then uh, some other uh, fish do have barbells, and these barbells do have different um, names. No, may mga maxilla, and then some other barbells and uh, tinatawag nating unique on that particular species. So basically, it entails for the soft anatomy as well as the skeleton or the osteology of a particular species that basically identifies that particular species belonging to that group. And then the next and the last one is the molecular characters, no? especially uh, nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA have become increasingly useful in the all levels of classification. Now, um, when you study uh, postgraduate studies and even undergraduate studies, 
basically you will uh, be dealing on the different molecular um, experiments no you will be um, tinatawag natin na mga may mga DNA synthesis may mga uh, DNA uh, RNA struct RNA extraction methods and then electrophoresis and uh, DNA sequencing and some other DNA barcoding that basically deals with molecular studies no um, in our level siguro um, it is uh, important to know that there are basically significant and accurate level of characterizing specific organisms when you deal with taxonomy especially when you deal with the study of population dynamics you will you will be using this particular methodology to support your claim that that particular fish be, uh, is really um Belo does really belong to this particular uh, group of organisms. This molecular character, uh, characteristic or molecular taxonomic characters also basically is used in, in uh, pathogenic or pathogenicity studies. No? So basically that is the principle of the molecular characters. Right? So uh, in, in this classification, no? um, we all know for a fact that there are about uh, 28,000 existing species of fish and are being placed in five different classes. What are these classes? These are hagfish, lampreys, cartilaginous fish, ray fish, uh, ray finned fish, and lobe finned fish. Now, uh, we've been talking about these five classifications, but we have a very little information no? uh, na alam natin on the, this particular five classifications. No? Now, let's first take a look at uh, this hagfish. Hagfish are very primitive fish. They retain their notochord throughout their life rather than developing a backbone and they lack scales and fins. No? Uh, this makes this organism unique because uh, basically they do not have the, the backbone but instead they retain their notochord that is supposedly to be developed as a backbone. And they are classified as vertebrates because they have a cranium. What is this cranium? I know for sure that most of you are familiar to this term, no? Ito yung parang protective covering of their head, itong cranium. Kung sa tao pa, tinatawag natin ito na skull, no? Hagfishes are noted for secreting large amount of thick, slimy mucus. The mucus that makes them slippery so that they can slip out, uh, slip out from the jaws of the predator. So basically, the hagfish, this is basically a hagfish look like. Okay, so that is the hagfish. And then we have uh, the lampreys. So we've been talking about lampreys, but there is very little that we know about lampreys. What are these lamprey? Like hagfish, lamprey also have, or also do not have scales, no? They have fins and a partial backbone. Most striking feature of the lamprey is the large round sucker. Lined with the teeth that surrounds the mouth, lamprey use this sucker to feed on the blood of the other fish organisms or other uh, living organism that they attach onto, right? So as you can see here, these are basically the protrusible suckers from from the the hag, I mean lampreys, right? So this is what they look like. They also have uh, this mucus secreting um, bodies or structures sa kanilang katawan that makes them very slimy right so that is the lamprey and then uh, here we have the group of cartilaginous fish basically uh, mga sharks rays and ratfish obviously these organisms do not have true bones they have the cartilaginous bones that makes them uh, fall under the group of cartilaginous fish so most of these organisms basically do not have swim bladder bucket uh, i mean they, i mean they do not have swim bladder they just uh basically dwell at the bottom no but they have the muscular fins that uh, basically propels them or keeps them afloat no muscular fins like for example itong mga sharks mga rays and then itong ratfish wala silang swim bladder but they have muscular fins right that keeps them afloat 
And then another group of organisms, the th uh, fourth group are the ray finned fish. So most of the fish that we know belongs to this uh, particular classification. No? Ito yung mga, uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, you can see sturgeons, butterfly fish, and uh, some of the ras uh, fishes. Okay, so these are basically most uh, fishes that we know, no? itong mga ray finned fish. So ray finned fish do have a skeleton, bony endoskeleton and swim bladder. Their thin fins consist of webs of skin over the flexible bony rays or spines. The fins, la the fins lack muscle, so their movements are controlled by the muscles in the body wall, right? So these are basically the ray finned fish. And then lastly, the lobe finned. Lobe finned fish are basically the primitive uh, type of fish. No, low fin fish are currently far fewer in number than ray finned fish. Their their uh, fins contain stump like appendage of bone and muscle. No, it is this is a type of fish that is known to be the ancestors of the reptiles. No, the rep terrestrial reptiles or or mga alligators and some other terrestrial um, reptiles. They are uh, two groups of lobs. There are two groups of uh, lob finned fish still alive today, particularly the silicons and uh, lungfish. You know? This is what a silicon look like, and this is a lungfish. If you have seen some of the videos in face Facebook, this lungfish could stay alive at a very dry environment no? because they have this um, lung-like organ for breathing air and even encapsulates themselves in a dry land kahit yung mga nagcrack na ng mga portions ng soil nandun pa rin sila sa ilalim it's still alive okay so that makes them unique and then so those are the four i mean five uh, classifications or major classifications of fishes all right so in in classifying fish there is what we call as the International Nomenclature Code. I know you are all familiar with this one. First is the Kingdom Classification, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species, and the Common Name. Okay, so basically, I mean the species rather. And then this is the common name of this particular uh, example of fish, the chameleon fish. And uh, one of our professors way back in my uh, undergraduate basically told us to, in order for us to not forget the sequence of this cl taxonomic classification we just remember the initials of this um, nomenclature code that king philip came over from great spain okay so kingdom phylum class order family genus and species and then we have here let's uh, take a look back to the different taxonomic methods no as we have earlier uh, discussed earlier any standard measurement that can be made on a fish is refers to a morphometric ta taxonomic method that involves the measurement of the snout length the measurement of the total length of the fish the width of the eye length of the jaw and the body length and many other measurements so that is the morphometric trait now as an example that this is basically a measurement for identification of a typical uh, ray fin fish okay so Ito yun siya. And then uh, we could uh, see here that this particular portion no, in this in this figure you could see basically clearly on on what which part you are going to measure. No? This will be your Bible in doing the in doing the um, laboratory activity. So from tip of the mouth towards the operculum, that is the head length, the tip of the mouth towards the base of the caudal fin, that is the standard length. Uh, total length is from the tip of the mouth towards the tip of the caudal fin, and then some other informations that may be important for you when you will be doing your laboratory activities. So take note of this. I'm not going to run through all of those um, measurements. And then that is the morphometric characteristics and uh, some of the other informations, the anal base fin length, no? anal fin base length and then uh, some many more and then 
Exemptions to morphometric characters are this type of species. No? Instead of the, the what is it called? Total length, we have a disc length for those um, rays and skates. No? We have a disc length. And then fork length naman yung mga uh, mackerels, no? Ito yun sila. From the tip of the mouth towards the base of the caudal fin. And then ito yung total length also for this kind of species. And then some uh, important information. All right, so the next one is the meristic trait, any trait that can be counted, including the number of vertebrae, fin rays, scale rows, uh lateral line pores brachials brachiostegal race so basically examples to those are this no ito yun sila and part of which are to be included in your laboratory activity okay and then uh, this is an example of counting the lateral lateral line scales that's why i am advising everyone to have uh group of eupterygy fish as a sample specimen for your laboratory activity and then this is the circumpendicular uh circumpendicular scales okay so that one and then this is the standard meristic counts for fish okay so here we have the predorsal scales lateral line scales uh scales above la lateral lines post dorsal scales and some other important um, meristic counts for fish, especially for um, meristic taxonomy. Okay, and then here we have the meristic traits for fish gills. Okay, ito yung tinatawag natin na isang uh, gill art. Okay, ito yung gill art. Uh, a typical number of a bony fish have eight gill arts for each side. And then what you're going to do is just get one of the gill arches, no? Kukuha kayo ng isa doon and then bibilangin niyo yung gill raker and then gill filaments. So that's basically the meristic trait of a fish gill. And then taxonomic methods, no? As we have been mentioning a while ago, anatomical or morphological characteristics description of no morphological or external anatomical is internal features not measurements or counts like for example the shape the shape or lateral line special features like long and some other special features like scutes no secondary up sexual characteristics or characters positions of the fins and barbells now talking about anatomical we have here a few examples of um Morphological, no? Ito yung tinatawag natin na positioning of the pelvic fin. Uh, although we have not dealed or encountered yet itong identification of the different parts of uh, different fins of the fish, yung tinatawag natin na pelvic fin is ito siya. Ito yung, dito yung dorsal fin, ito yung caudal fin, ito yung anal fin, pelvic fin, and pectoral fin. Ang pelvic fin in, in the taxonomy uh, aspect basically varies depending on the species. No? Meron tayong tinatawag na jugular pelvic fin, yung nasa uh, pinakailalim ng operculum. And then meron din tayong abdominal, yung sa ilalim ng abdomen niya. So ito. And then thoracic, ito siya na klase. Ito siya is also a thoracic type of pelvic fin. Okay, so those are the three types of, of um, pelvic fins that basically focuses on the or highlighting on the taxonomic classification and then here we have some of the barbells of a catfish so it is numbered now this one is the nasal barbell second is the mandibulary barbell and then mental or chin barbell and itong pang fourth the, the longest barbell is the maxillary barbell Okay, so yan yun. And then some more. Basically, this is a fish having the what we so-called as the keel. No? If you are familiar with the parts of the boat, 
meron tayong tinatawag na hall and then in between in the middle of the hall we have the keel no ito yung ito yun siya ito yung parang line diyan sa abdomen niya yan yung tinatawag natin na keel okay there yan may animation pala and then as cute is basically a typical uh, unique characteristic for uh, surgeon fishes. Scutes, an external body plate for a surface fish. A scute serves a protective function, acting as a body armor for fish against environmental abrasions and even predation. In some fishes, scutes are a row of scales body parted into sharp protected plates. Attention. Okay. And then some more for the red cap oranda, they have this what we called as the when. A bubble mass around the head is called the when for the red cap oranda. And then, uh, so much for the anatomical, let's proceed to molecular phylogenetics. The molecular phylogenetics basically is the examination of traits of molecular level. No, uh, we have what we call as the cladogram, displays the interrelatedness of taxonomic groups, divides them by shared, um or not shared traits in a dichotomous manner show transition from more primitive to more advanced and the phy phylogenetic tree is as above that includes passage of time between branch points now here we have um an example of the phyletic uh taxonomy of, of a particular fishes i mean particular taxonomic method no uh, this one is the monophyletic, no? Monophyletic ang tawag natin dito. And then this one is polyphyletic and this one is paraphyletic. Now, um, basically in that particular example, itong, itong taxonomic method na to, tinatawag itong monophyletic because this taxon is basically, in, in, in basically implies a one particular group of organisms that descended from the same ancestor no ito ay silang mga organisms na to descended from the same ancestor of this b no and then itong taxon to the polyphyletic tinatawag tong mono kasi the same ang ancestor ancestral um ancestral individual nila and then itong polyphyletic naman tinatawag nating poly kasi uh, iba iba yung mga ancestors nila okay so composed of unrelated organisms yung mga ancestors and then this one the paraphyletic however is basically implies the most recent ancestors no ito yun sila and then this this one ang ancestor nila is this one and then um this one ang i is ancestor is a okay so basically they are all of the same para paraphyletic taxon okay so that's basically the difference between the three and then uh in in classifying organisms also we have this what we call as the dichotomous key the dichotomous key basically is being um used popularly in in the science of taxonomy no? in in your laboratory activity in task i mean in task five you are going to identify I have given a set of um, instrument and then you're going to identify a particular species based on that particular um, instrument. No? So dichotomous key is basically um, gives two or mutually exclusive choices and parallel statements. A pair statement is referred to as a couplet and each half of the couplet is a lead. No? Uh, I know for sure some of you are already familiar with this dichotomous key. No? I bet you have already done uh, dichotomous key identification on some of the uh, other organisms that you have built on previously, siguro sa zoology or sa botany. Okay? And then another taxonomic key is what we call as the polyclave keys. So this was what I was talking about, that uh, a key that uses elimination method or elimination process to identify a particular species no parang meron silang instrument to take a look at kung meron bang ganito or uh, wala bang ganyan okay so kung wala eh, eh, uh, eliminate na yun siya na characteristic and then kung meron wala din siyang ganito eliminate din yan wala ang ganyan until maubos yung characteristics that leads to a certain specific characterization of a particular species okay so yan yun and then 
this is what I was talking about earlier in your laboratory activity. I mean, in your task five, you're going to identify a particular fish using this instrument. So what you're going to do is to identify first, the first split is identify first if they have a true vertebra or they have uh, no vertebra, no? Yung mga walang vertebra or walang true vertebra are hogfish and lampreys. I mean, hogfishes, right? So wala silang vertebra. So they, they fall to that particular split. So ma-identify nyo yan siya agad. However, kung meron naman siyang um, vertebra, it implies for another split na naman. Okay? So what we are doing here is basically uh, the dichotomous key identification. Yun yung tinatawag natin na leads to a certain uh, ang tawag dito certain lead no ito yung ang each half couplet is a lead no parang meron na siyang specific um identification kaagad so ito yun siya and then uh, the second split is dagnatha versus athostomata okay so your your basis in this would be if they have jaws or they lack jaw so if they lack jaw they are basically lamprey. And then if they have jaw, you're going to proceed with another split, which is the split of chondrichthyes and osteichthyes. Chondrichthyes basically are all cartilaginous fish. Osteichthyes are all bony fish. Okay, so kapag chondrichthyes, yeah, you could also classify them according to the, the holocephali or el elasmobranchi. Okay. So these are basically the, the, the type of uh, organisms that fall in this particular group of fishes. And then in this group, you are going to split them further into another split that we call as the split according to the lobe fin or ray fin, no? sarcopterygy or actinopterygy. So kapag sarcopterygy, they are classified as lobe fin. And then kapag actinopterygy, they are classified as ray fin. And then kapag low fin siya, like for example, like your example, your, your organism is salacanths or lungfish. So they fall in this particular group. And then kapag hindi naman, kapag uh, hindi siya low fin, they, they fall on the group of actinopterygy. So you are going to split them further into another classification. Ito yun siya, chondrichthyes and neopterygy. Okay? Chondro, uh, chondrostae and neopterygy. So, itong sa first classification, meron tayong tinatawag na spiral or uh, secondary, secondarily cartilaginous and spiral bulb intestine. Ito yung mga sp spiral bulb intestine are basically uh, examples or shark. No? Ang mga sharks are highly predatory or organism. So they have this spiral bulb intestine to uh, increase the surface area for absorption during digestion. And then kapag hindi naman siya uh, nag-fall sa first classification, they, they, they have to be split into further um, classification. Neopterygy can be split into two uh, non-teleost and teleost organisms. So non-teleost are, are basically group of organisms having abbreviated heterocircal tail and ganoid scales okay so and then teleost can either be homocircal tail and can either have tenoid or cycloid scales now what are these heterocircal and uh, what are these ganoid scales i have here an example of the different types of caudal fin and uh, the types of scales so you could read more about this no, you could search a lot of literatures in the internet. No, ito yun siyang tinatawag na hetero, um, homocircle and heterocircle niya. And then these are tenoid, cycloid, ganoid, and placoid type of scales. So all in all, that ends for the module 2 in our discussions for today. I hope you have um, gained something. And uh, let's, before we end, let us uh, have a quick look on the activity that I was talking about. So we have here that your task four, no? ito yung task four niyo, uh, for five points, compare and contrast taxonomy and systematics, and then 10 points, 
briefly discuss the four taxonomic characters and uh, for another five points, we'll be differentiating monophyletic, polyphyletic, and paraphyletic. And then task five would be your uh, fish classification. Ito yung tinatawag ko na uh, dichotomous key um, classification. So I just rewrote the split material that I have shown earlier. And then these are the organisms that you are going to classify according to that instrument. So we have here the Atractostios spatula. I guess this is, uh, these are uh, gars, no? gar fishes. And then huso huso, the st um, sturgeon. And then salacans, the chimera fish, barboides. These are basically uh, the, um, some of the group of, or uh, the families of this fish are uh, dominant. I mean, popular in Lake Lanao. And then the snapper. Dojanos Malabaricos. And then that's your your task five, which accounts for about 30 points. Yet, yet ito. And then your laboratory activity, your first laboratory activity will be the morphometric and veristic characteristics. So just read all of these. These are say these are basically very intuitive, no? And then uh you're going to have uh I advise you to have a group of a, a fresh fish of neopterygino, yung may yung mga fish na may scales na malalaki, preferably malaki. And then uh, you're going to prepare all the materials. You're going to wear your lab gown, face mask, disposable gloves, and then have a picture of yourself uh, with the space specimen and materials on the table and you're going to identify your specimen first and identify the taxonomic hierarchy and here we go ito yung mga morphometric traits that you're going to measure and ballistic traits that you're going to count and you're going to provide hands one paragraph of your hands-on experience in this activity and draw a conclusion in relation to taxonomy and being a future professional so Ito yun siya lahat ang gagawin nyo. And this will be your data sheet. And this will be the space for your um, discussion and conclusion. If you have any questions, you may, uh, you're very welcome to reach me through our group chat. Okay. So I think that's all for today. And I hope to see you again in our next um, video lecture. Thank you very much.